Over here. She snaps her fingers. Says as a crowd in the metro room all becomes for turning to you. Disorientated. Are you still wondering where you are? This is Martinez, in case you've forgotten. I advise you not to overstay your welcome. Her entire character has shifted. This young woman is cold as ice. <laughs> No, I am not a gardener. I'm a legal counselor for the Dock Workers Union. Maybe he does. She points the man on her right. That's Titus. Talk to him. But know this. I'll be keeping an eye on you. No strong arming. Nothing official. The district of Martinez does not recognize your authority to make arrests. <laughs> It doesn't matter if you recognize our authority. We will make an arrest if we have to. She says nothing. Her glare speaks for her. <coughs> Could this be the Miss Beaufort that is the illusion? The one Mr. Everett sent to law school? What's your role in all of this? Like I already told you, I'm a legal counselor. Do you have hearing problems? <coughs> I suggest not wasting time on trivial pleasantries and focusing on why you are actually here. Titus Hardy. Even 
even though she has excellent control over herself, something new behind her eyes, in the way she stands, in her face. <laughs> You are not here to chat up the legal counsel. You are here to question these men. What if I want to talk to you? You want to throw this? What you want is of no significance, officer. Don't test your authority. In matinees, you are no one. <laughs> what are you going to do to me? What are we going to do to you? <laughs> the union isn't going to do anything to you. It is not a crime syndicate. It is a labor organization. It is the RCA do things to people, but we digress. you're living in forcing violence. These people are just dock workers. <laughs> think it will happen again. <laughs> You're a mob. You're forcing the unlawful privatization of Revisha. Twenty fat men in the Occident are stealing it all. And you're their bodyguards. Ask 
what you came to ask, or get back to your commanders. <laughs> No one is emotional here. Do your job. <laughs> What's this? We're getting reports of normal, reasonable, temperate, political opinions somewhere in Martinez. Of course, radical, centrist. In these bright and loud times where a thousand frequencies drown one another out, sober thinking is a radical act. It's time to become a citizen of the Kingdom of Conscience. First, where is the King of Conscience? It is not a place. It is a moment in time that can only arise in the right circumstances in all of human history. It's only been achieved a handful of times. That's an oral goal, not your head president. It is, isn't it? History's greatest catastrophes have been brought about by people trying to make the world a better place too quickly. That's the genius of Dolores Day. She recognized that progress is meaningless if it's gained stability. Real Lasting change can only come about gradually, increment by increment. Okay, but what's the kingdom of conscience actually like? The kingdom is difficult to comprehend and even more difficult to describe. <sighs> Because humanity will need to discard many of the categories that define and limit it today. The kingdom of conscience is post capitalist, post national. It's also post industrial post-ideological, and even post-sexual. Sounds incredible. Z, let's go there right Slow now. down, Mr. Reasonable. Did you miss the part about compromising and taking things slow? <sighs> That's right. Remember, real democracy <sighs> is just around the corner for Rivershaw. When that kicks in, a long time from now, we are all going to be so much happier. Mm-hmm. 
dipshit. You're hard of hearing or something? The boss man's talking to you. Do not let this news disturb your sanity. These are but simple peasants, sire. What, is he fucking kidding? This guy high or something? <laughs> hey asshole, up here. We're talking to you. Wow. The RCM sent us some big dick cops. Real big dick cops. Look at them. Reckless. Swinging in the wind. Yeah, look at the big dick on that cop. Can't tell a dick that big what to do. Must be something in the water in Jamrock. Yeah, gave him real nice big dicks. Yeah. <clears throat> you might want to start asking your questions now. It's not going to get better than this. <laughs> Chances are they're going to match. Starting from the right. Boot size, 44. Blonde man. In his 30s. Overbearingly masculine. <coughs> Sitting on his right. Standard working class. Size, 45 or 46. Eldest in the room, probably mid-fifties, smoker, quiet. Across in the other table, hobnailed working boots, size 43, gang tattoos. Mesk or Sarah Maurizian in his late thirties, early forties. Spent his youth in Villa Labos, a housing project in the jungle. <laughs> there were incarcerations, hard to say what else. The ink is fading. And then, standard working boot, <laughs> steel reinforced toes, size 46, the big dick, wide at the shoulders and lean at the hips, rugby cap, fingerless gloves, and numerous scars, a little under 40. Non-alcoholic beverage in hand. You squint 
Is that a plectrum? <laughs> on his neck. Forget it. It's not important. Let's call this one the niche. Size 41. With the light step. Not a child, after all. An old man <laughs> with a rat face. Mean, watery eyes. And two front teeth <laughs> missing. One of them is missing the odd soul. Exactly. You stood there for about four seconds, not saying anything. <laughs> Hit them with questions. Where's the eighth Harley? The fuck is with Bell? The man hanging in the backyard. So, do you do it? You're not just here to swing your big dick. You're here for mm. the pretty boy. A record, that one. <laughs> Stinks like shit too. <sighs> They love him, boss. Spend all day digging around in there. Can't get enough of that pretty boy smell. Funny, but my partner and I have a serious matter to discuss with you. <laughs> Why is the container built around the dead man's neck? Container belt? Like we use in the harbor? Yes, why? Because we took it from the harbor where we were. Then we went out back and used it to hang. We did this together, all of us, until he was dead. That's why there's a container belt around his neck. There's a catch hidden somewhere. He didn't confess so that you could take the car away. It's too simple. But there's a catch. <laughs> These seven honest men have all equally come forth to tell you what happened, so that you don't waste any more of your time. All seven together, they're diluting responsibility. It's an anti-arrest tactic. You better seem like that. No nonsense. How many people have you sent to the Shays? Ever felt remorse for them? Shays Electric is the method of capital punishment <coughs> under operation. During the suzerain's reign, it used to be the firing squad. Or send them to reunion to rot for 20 years. And reunion, what's that? The River Esperance Correctional Facility, a military prison run by the coalition, done reunion by the inmates. The origin of the name is unknown. What we do is different. We enforce the law. You just kill people like it's nothing. But you see, the law, lawman, is something we can live upon. And here in Martinez, we agreed that this man had to die. Who <laughs> called the shots that night? Are you dead? <sighs> there will be no singling anyone out. You can't arrest a Hardy boy without arresting all Hardy boys. 
Do you think you could do that? Do you think you could arrest them all? A trick question. Don't let her lead the conversation. <laughs> Who do you fucking think does? <coughs> You do. You give the commands. That's right, asshole. Titus Hardy runs the Hardy Boys. Ain't that so, fellas? He looks around for approval. <laughs> I think you got your answer, Mr. Law. No. You did not get an answer. Titus does administrative work. He pushes paper, fills out forms. The others can't read. But on that night... They all acted as one man. Why did this hanging incident occur? You don't have to keep answering his questions. The fixer turns to remind Titus. I know, Lizzie. Relax. We killed him last Sunday night. Seemed like a good way to the week. How long have you known the victim? Know him? We don't associate with scum like that, asshole. Yeah! Who do you think we are? Quiet. He came around about three weeks ago when that Pines cow first sailed into town. And by the Pines cow, you mean the representative for Wild Pines? The shipping company you are striking against? No. I mean the Pines cow. The stupid ass cow they sent to the fuck us over. But you know what? He grabbed his chin pretend to mull it over. Why don't you ask her about the pretty boy? I'm sure she has interesting things to say when you ask her hard enough. That's enough insinuation for today, Titus. Officer, your interview is drawing to an end. Don't waste your last questions. Why did you kill him? Why? Because he was worthless mercenary scum. And he stepped out of mm. in my town. So he was a mercenary, that's it. I am. He stepped out of line. He repeats his jaw clamp shut like a vice. The kind of mercenary. The kind that <clears throat> shows up when you start a strike. The experienced <clears throat> too. Ko Hoy and Semini written all over. Ex Oranese Special Forces. A live grenade, right here in our bar. The man spreads his arms. I can't, but I know he was sent by the wild pines. They had a murky shit like that. Story of every strike from here to Samara. Colonel, how do you even know he was special forces? Because one night he walked straight up to the mic and said, I'm RNA's goddamn special forces, and I'm gonna fuck you all. Really? Yeah, really. Had a gin and tonic up there, sang some Oranese paratrooper song, and said he's gonna fuck everyone. We couldn't believe it either, but he fucking did. Right there. Like some kind of animal. Sire, the tale is true. This is a serious violation of the karaoke code. <laughs> Okay, besides crimes against karaoke, what did he actually do wrong? Wrong? He harassed women, raped one, harassed workers, threatened to kill some as a warning. He wipes spittle from his mouth. From rape, to harassment, to threats of violence. Why the strange de-escalation? He regrets mentioning it. Hopes you didn't notice. To kill us all. If we don't open the gates, if we don't let the scabs in, if we don't bend over. And that was before he started coming here. Yeah, he said it was his favorite joint now. Started to come in here every night. Drinking, grabbing girls, grab one of ours mid karaoke, right there on the stage. He grabbed someone? The Lucent is trying to make sense of this flood of information. Yeah. This girl's on the mic, a beautiful girl, young, 
gets into the second verse of Love a Lake, the fucker grabs her legs and starts screaming. Show me your cunt! Why don't you show me your cunt? Then, he gets knocked on the head with a wine bottle. He doesn't even fall down. He shakes his head in disbelief. Why was this the same girl who sexually assaulted, raped, you said? Aren't you fucking listening? My man is talking to you. He took care of it. They got the good thing before anything else could happen. Yeah, me and Eugene got her out. Aren't you fucking listening? It repeats like a parrot. There's something odd here. Seems like they don't want to talk about that rape Titus mentioned. Why not? This is a serious allegation. Make them talk about it. Right, but who did he rape then? That's a very serious allegation. No, you're not getting a name. That's a modern A's matter. I'm discussing it with you clowns. There's nothing you can do for now. He's still only one. How did you kill him? We hanged him up by his neck until he got real still. Wasn't that obvious, copper? Didn't they teach you anything at the cop school, idiot? This is where an autopsy come in handy. You have to work with what you know. Read more. Did you muffle him? We haven't heard him reports of screams. We don't have to clarify anything. We overpowered him. Dragged his unconscious body to the tree. Put a noose around his neck. And hanged him till he was dead and steady. Then we left him for seagulls, maggots, and you fucks. Make them a bit more uncomfortable first. Then see if it all adds up. Wasn't he a trained killer from the Orangey Special Forces? If yes, how did you manage to overpower him? With numbers, asshole. How do you think? You're right, Lizzie. I've done enough explaining here. No, he hasn't. Not yet. When did when where did this overpowering happen? Seventy-two percent. Let's give it a try. Titus is so as a rock, and so are a few others. But... First, tell me who is solid. Looks like he might be Titus is right <coughs> now, the least antsy of the bunch. Definitely not his first time being questioned by the police. This little rat-faced fellow <laughs> is solid too. Always fidgety. Yes, but no change there. Him neither. Mostly keeps to his tomato juice or whatever he's got now. Who's cracking under the pressure? <sighs> this one. He's sweating profusely and has difficulty breathing. They're smartly keeping him out of the conversation thus far. Definitely the weakest link in the chain. A single sentence would clear him out. He can't take the length of the question. Keep it going long enough and he'll crack. Hey you, turns out a big guy. You haven't dropped breathing over there. No. He looks up, startled. His forehead shiny with sweat. A few coils locked are peeking out from under his warm wound hat. Of course he's having trouble breathing. Just look at how fucking fat he is. <laughs> Fuck off, Shanky. Angus is a powerful guy. All muscle. Keep your eye on this powerful guy. Sooner or later, he's going to break like a piece of twig. There's something you're not telling me. Fuck you too, copper. Picking on Angus like this. We're done with this schoolyard shit. And just so you know, he doesn't have trouble breathing. This one is a stone wall. You won't get more out of them about the murder. Of the murder. Right, uh, I have other questions about the lynching. Like Why don't I just arrest you? Yeah, lawman. Why don't you? 
he takes a step closer as well, fixing his ball cap. It's almost an anthropological sight which you try to assert dominance over you. Not in the arresting mood. He's mean little eyes come alive with hatred. By your side, the lieutenant keeps his hand away from his holster. You hear the nylon of his coat hiss as he steps closer. While the little faced man reaches into his sleeve, there's a knife in there. Some of the others reach for their belts. Their eyes are light. You confess the murder. I'm taking you in. Take even, even closer. Step even closer. Look, Cassandra, I know you think you're doing a job here, but there are seven of us and two of you. That's an Easter 50, a Ziemsk made monstrosity. It'll blow your head clean off. <laughs> Almighty God, even Dick Mullen only has a 45. <laughs> it's it's a tempt it's so tempting, but I believe I'll just die. The little girl's right. I'm not in an arresting mood. The little guy, you're the little guy now. <laughs> he grins the Japanese teeth like a rusted hole. So, I, you had some questions. <laughs> Yeah, little question. <laughs> so what are we going to do now? Conclude the question. Nothing. Your investigation here is done. Leave Martinez, go back to your stations where you belong. I think we're going to stick around, thanks. Something will add up here, Titus. Lieutenant closes his notebook. I've done this job for long enough to know that people don't just confess to 30 years. Even if it is a group responsibility, we are going to look into this. Good luck with that. You've heard everything a red cop is gonna hear from us, real law officials. You're lucky you didn't get a beat. I found eight sets of footprints, but there are only seven of you. Where is the eighth hardy boy? What are you talking about, bad man? There's no eighth hardy boy. There's seven of us in here. He sizes you up. Or what? You will be the eighth hardy boy. We can hire him. He shakes his head. Actually, boss, we've been talking and we think she could maybe... She? So there's an eighth hardy and it's a hardy girl. Who might it be? Elizabeth? The gardener? Shut the fuck up, Glenn! I do talking here. Fuck the board, cop. It has to be good if he won't let you pursue it. Looks like the lieutenant thinks so too. So let me get this straight. There is an ace hardy boy. It's a she, and you don't like us to know about her? That's right. We're not talking about this. This is a private hardy boy's matter. Nothing to do with your shit. And. He points to the lieutenant. You're not cops here. Don't go digging around. You don't want a bullet in the back of your head. I'm watching you. Good. We are all watching each other. Officer, your question. The lieutenant just his spectacles. There's no point to push it further, he thinks. This is all we have, Victor. We'll learn more about this eighth party sooner or later. I'm going to take off now. I need to look on that window. The whole full bush is outside. There's nothing else in this room is there besides us. I've got nothing to say to you. Why are you wasting your time? Are you the hardy girl? I am not. You could be lazy. You could be anything. You could even be a model. Even a model? Glenn, I went to law school. 
I am an attorney. He's right. With a face like that, she could be on the cover of her debutant international. She's right, you know, you're very pretty. The look in her eyes speaks louder than words. She is not amused. It's not her. She's not a hardy girl. Definitely not. Maybe we'll talk later. Well, I'm going to end this recording here. So, as usual, if you watch this, thank you very much. And I'll catch you guys in the Bye.